So the queue properties is one of the windows that you're going to be using probably the most in Ovation. Uh, that's why I always kind of like to have it locked next to my queue uh, list area so I can quickly access it and, and get a hold of uh, the information that's needed in there. So a queue list, or so the queue properties are where we, we assign all of the information about what's going to happen with the queue. Uh, things like the name, name. Uh, we can add a little comments, so fire... Uh, one, two, three, and we get the listing up uh, next to the name. Um, things like we can uh, we can manually type in a length, so we can add time to it. Uh, manually type in fade ins, fade outs. We can also ad address this in the active queue window, which we'll look at when we're uh, in the video with active queue window editing. Um, but we can manually type them in here. Uh, we can also then set interaction rules, so we can set the interaction rules for. Uh, the individual queue uh, for information on the uh, interaction rules themselves. Just watch the video about the interaction rules. Um, we've got something here called ignore parent rules. This is quite a handy one where if you've got queue list rules or show rules, what you can do is allow them to filter out uh, from uh, or be li it'll it'll stop the queue from listening to them. So if you have a show property that says every queue should fire the next queue in the list when ending, uh, but you don't want that to affect a specific queue in a specific list, you can ignore the parent rules to, to avoid that. Um, we can then uh, also set name and add rules to the markers that exist within our uh, queues. Again, markers are set in the active queue window, which we'll look at in that video. Um, if we have a timed queue list, then within that, we've got timed queues. So if I pop into show mode, we can see here that my timed queue list will then have a go time, or my timed queue will then have a go time. So I've got one hour and nine seconds, 10 seconds. So I'm just going to do one hour and uh, zero, zero and 20 seconds and enter. And now we'll see that at, there we go. And we get a go time. Yep. So uh, we can also then uh, color our, uh, our actual cues, which is quite nice. So within here, I can click and I can say, give me a bit of uh, highlighting, uh, change the font. Uh, so I don't know, Calibri 20 and so on and so forth. So we can get uh, a nice little bit of highlighting of the, the specific cues in a list that we might want to see apart from the other ones. Um, we then have uh, the audio area. So when I click on it, by default, it pops open saying, hey, do you want to add some new audio to it? Or if I also, if I already have audio assigned to the queue, as I do in this list, um, it opens up and shows me the path to my piece of audio. If I click here, I can replace or I can remove the audio. So by replacing it, uh, I will re put a new piece of audio into the queue, but leave all of the additional information uh, there. I then have gain, so I've got 144 dB down and as much as I want up. Not that you want hundreds of dB of gain, but you've got it. You've got more than 10 or more than 12 or more than 24. Uh, this is also just DSP-based gain, so uh, you're not actually rendering this this information onto the queue. Uh, we can then provide an offset, so we can add uh, gaps or, or silence before the queue starting um, by entering the time in here. So the really interesting bit about the queue properties above and beyond uh, just the naming and, and manipulating the queue itself is the additional information which we can add to it after uh, a piece of audio or other than a piece of audio. So all of the information here uh, can be added into a queue. And I'll go through them very quickly so we can see what is available to be added. First off, microphone and input switching. So on our internal mix engine here, we can design this to have replay from Ovation and also manage live inputs. But on top of those two features, which we, uh, which we have as, as, as a default, we can also change the state of a channel strip from replay to input. So we can have a, a, a track which is set to re repro, which is set to, to replay, uh, so not listening to an input. And then when we fire a cue, it opens that channel strip up and allows us to listen to an input. So you could imagine you've got a button in a custom list that we name uh, microphone on. Yeah. So once that's named, we can then 
in here, say uh, we want it to be maybe uh, microphone four or microphone strip, uh, strip four. Uh, we can also do a range, which is quite nice. So it can be four microphones at the same time, which is quite handy. And then we'll set this cue length to one hour. So it's open for a while. And then as soon as we turn that on, microphone, uh, sorry, channel strips four to eight, open up and we'll listen to the live inputs. And when we close it, it closes those inputs. Very nice. Time code generation. So we can generate time code to any output from a queue. So once we start a queue playing, we will generate time code at the same time. So I can say generate time code at LTC1 starting at one hour. Very simple. And you can see up here, as we add information to uh, a queue, it adds an icon saying that we've got uh, something other than audio there. So if I, again, add in a microphone, you can see the little microphone. Here. So we can also add MIDI machine control. So I can put in on MIDI 1 uh, and start the time code again, maybe at one hour, whatever. Maybe well, let's do this one at 10 hours just to be different. Uh, I can load a MIDI file. So I can go and find uh, a MIDI file. Uh, just like a piece of audio, and it will embed it into the um, uh, queue. So when I fire it, it'll start the MIDI file playing, and it'll synchronize it to the audio, which is in the same queue. I can have a generic MIDI command. So on fire, pause, or stop of any queue, I can create a MIDI command that I will send out. So I can say note on on channel 1, so note 8, whatever. And then the stop command can be something different. And the pause command can be something different as well, which is quite nice. Uh, I can set up a nine pin time code. So I can say on uh, an output nine pin port, uh, start at 20 hours and send that out as well. Uh, COM T32 command. So on a COM port, uh, I can then set out an ASCII or a hex string. So run. Uh, and again, I get a fire and a stop command as well. TCP IP commands. So again, set, uh, if I've got an IP device configured, I can say uh, load uh, show one and create command strings to send to any IP device. Uh, GPOs. So I can set a GPO device to uh, the ovation and I can then open and close contact closures dependent on the state of a queue. And then also I can uh, send script batch command. So I can actually load .ini files and allow them to fire uh, with uh, a queue, pause with a queue, and stop with a queue. And then that will send different INI uh, commands uh, across to other computers, to other internal programs, load a PowerPoint or something along that nature, along, along that, those lines. Um, I can load mixer automation. So we'll look at this as a separate video, but in the mixer, I can assign uh, a snapshot. So I can say snapshot my mixer and uh, then oops, so snapshot my mixer and give it a glide time of well, let's not do three hours 30 seconds. So when I move from one to another it will so if I do this, this and this and then I fire this cue we can see I get a slow glide back of the information. So again, that can be assigned into the same queue as MIDI, as audio, as it inputs everything together all nicely and neatly in one go. So down at the bottom here, I've got four that are labeled slightly differently. Remote control. So remote control uh, allows us to get an input directly to the queue for specific things. So first off, a generic MIDI command. I can assign uh, any MIDI command I want to fire, pause, or stop any queue within any queue list. So I can, I can type this in manually, um, or I can allow it to learn. So I just open up the learn box, I fire the MIDI command, I say OK, and I'm happy and I've got... So I can do that for the pause and the stop commands as well. Just like with the MIDI, I can also do this with TCP IP. So I can again set to listen off an IP device, set whether it's ASCII or hex, and I can either type in uh, a command I want to respond to, so run Q1, or if I've already got an IP device which speaks in a language and it's sending out fire commands the way it wants, I can also learn, listen to that IP port, uh, that IP device on the port, 
and listen, get the IP command from it, click OK, and it sets it as the fire command, the pause command, or the stop command. Um, for remote control multi-sequencer synchronization and for datatron synchronization, um, we're I'm going to show you that they're here, but for the specifics on these, we'll deal with them in synchronization with watchout, datatron watchout systems, uh, and also multi-sequencer synchronization as a separate video. Um, thanks very much.